I can't tell you what was going through my mind other than the fact that, okay, I was on a boat, now I'm in the water, and the boat's gone. <laughs> I was like, Mr. Ron, your boat, and he said, don't worry about it. My name is Sam Blalock, and that's Ron Gaston. And I'm friends with his daughter, Sarah. She texted me a couple weeks prior and asked me if I wanted to go sailing with her dad. I was like, sure, why not? I didn't know what I was getting myself into. The weather forecast, it was gonna be blowing a little bit, so, but we've been sailing for years, so, you know, had no problem there. I wasn't worried. So we, we, we took off uh, an hour before the start. I said, okay, it'll take us about an hour to get out there. I said, well, you'll learn. We got an hour to learn, so to teach her. So, uh, so we went out there, we sailed around. We did a couple of tacks. I said, okay, this is how we're gonna tack. So, and we did pretty good with tacking. We did, it moved a lot better than I thought it would. And then um, we are going out there, so we got out on trap. So both of us got out on trap. I grabbed her life jacket, we pulled her out there, and. And uh, so we were going pretty fast, going good. It was good until it went bad, basically. So I said, okay, well, it's time to go back to Buccaneer Yacht Club. That's where we launched. So uh, we pulled in the sails and we start going. And um, so we got the GPS. And uh, so we were kind of bored at the time. And it's like, well, how fast are we going? So that's when we got the GPS off the board, off the uh, tramp and put it around her neck. So we're just looking at it, kind of bored, just and watching the speed just fluctuate up and down. You know, you hear people saying, "Oh, didn't you see the big, big clouds come in?" You know, didn't you see us? Like, we, we didn't see anything. It just happened. You know, we didn't see the big clouds come in. Um, you know, as we got a little closer, okay, here comes the lightning, and that got a little, uh, you know, a little scary. It was just, I think, it started popping on the left of us, and then. You're saying it was in front of us and then it was on the other side of us and it was just kind of like felt like you were surrounded we're like okay it's just a little lightning storm no big deal i told her don't touch anything metal we sat on the tramp and probably after that maybe about a minute after like then it starts raining and then <laughs> the winds pick up and it went bad i think we had about 70 mile an hour winds and the boat just shook just violently and probably 10 seconds, Easy. we were in the water. It flipped over. I just remember the wind indicator starts spinning and then he lost control of the jib, which is the short sail on the front of the boat. And um, I watched the holes come up and next thing you know, the boat's flipping and we're flying off. She goes in the water first. I'm sliding down the tramp behind her. Um, I grab her and I still had a rope in my hand and then the boat, you know, of course the wind was blowing, so the boat was just moving. So I'm like, okay, got a choice? Hold on to the boat or hold on to Hannah? So I'm like, ah, no, no choice there. So I let the boat go and we held on each other. And what do you think when the, when the wind was hitting the sail so hard and starts shaking? I, I, was, I was kind of freaked out. I was like, Mr. Ron, what's going on? I said, this is not supposed to happen. So I know enough about sailing right now to know that this is not right. And, and you hear the reports, you know, like, well, you know, didn't you see the wind coming up or anything? See it rolling. It happened so fast and, um, no. <laughs> we didn't see it coming. So we're holding on to each other and then just the waves are crashing over our heads. And, um, so we just kind of sat there, you know, just kind of, you know, there's pretty much nothing you can do. No. Um, you know, people think it's like, well, we, we, we do you think you're going to drown? Do you think you're going to do this? Uh, you know. That didn't that didn't go through our heads. It didn't go through mine. Did it go through yours? I don't think so. I, it, it, we just, you know, we were just there. Your brain was just, it was bearing down. It felt like knives yeah. almost. It was raining so hard. You couldn't really see. If you turned your face like this way, there was, it was hitting you directly in the face. So we were like, we can't do that. So yeah. we just, we faced the opposite way of which the rain was going and we're trying to move towards, towards, yeah. towards where we thought was <laughs> sure. We're sitting there swimming. I was like, okay, I think the land's there. But after 30 minutes, we finally see the land. So we start swimming towards it. And I'm thinking, oh yeah, 
I got a cell phone. This is his youngest daughter's old iPhone that had a life proof case on it. And when you turn your cell phone service off of your phone, the iPhones turn into emergency phones. So you can call 911 and that's it. And this was in, there's a little pocket on the tramp and he had taken this out of the pocket and put it in his life vest. So we made sure it didn't fall out. And then, so that came in handy. And then this is this, uh, the handheld GPS we had, we were using to watch the speed. And I had this around my neck and I tucked it under my life jacket so it wouldn't fall off if we hit a bump or anything. But this is how we had our coordinates and I sat on the phone with the Coast Guard for 55 minutes on the iPhone. When you call 911, they'll say what location it is. So you're calling and they're saying, Mobile 911, what's your location? And your response is Mobile Bay. You know, kind of, you hear them pause and they're like, Mobile Bay? You're talking about the bay? No, the literal bay. I'm in the water. <laughs> Okay, let me pat, let me pat you in the Coast Guard. <laughs> they started coming our way, and we saw like the blue lights on the top of the boat. And I started. That heading. was a relief. Yeah, we did see that, and that was kind of like, oh my goodness, there's a boat. They're coming to get us, but they don't know where we're at. <laughs> um, they started going into the channel, and at this point, I'm still on the phone with the Coast Guard, and I'm like, hey, they're going the wrong way. Come the other way. So they're they're pretty much going east and west in the channel, and we're like, and Hannah was saying. Go do south. Go south. <laughs> come, and come it goes the into channel. the channel. And then he comes out of the channel like, go do south. Go do south. He goes north. <laughs> and, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, we start cracking jokes a little bit. It's like, oh, come on. Just go south. You'll, you'll run into us. We did. We told them, if you come south, you will literally probably run right over us. So you come out of the first channel marker and you go south. We're right there. I had the phone in one hand and then I had my hand in, like, in the air and we were trying to like signal them. You know, they pulled her up first and I got on. and um, She just literally picked me up with one hand and dropped me in the boat. I was like, thanks. So that was, uh, that was definitely a relief. I can't wait to go back out. I'm really excited. I asked Mr. Ron as soon as we got back to Buccaneer, I said, when are we going sailing again? <laughs>later that night we were finding out about people that we knew that were in the race after that point you're just trying to figure out where everyone is and you're trying to figure out who's okay who's not okay I'm really glad that those people that have been found are okay and I'm it makes me sick to know that there's still people out there that haven't been found and if I could do anything that I would be out there with them trying to find somebody because I know with that I know that it's got to be heartbreaking to know that you still have family members out there and then we get to come home. And in a sense, I don't want to say it's not fair, but then again, it's not.